make a sunrise uh, Sprinkle it with dew Where? Sprinkle it with dew David! There, there are sweets Miracle or two The Candyman uh, You know the Candyman can uh, There's a basket of sweets The can is it with love that makes the world taste good? Oh, who could take tomorrow? Who could take tomorrow? Sprinkle it with dew! Sprinkle it with dew! I cover it in chocolate or a miracle or two. The candy man. The candy man. Hello and welcome. It's Dana Gillespie. I'm still here at the TAM, the Temple of Art and Music. And of course, it's this marvelous night of Anthony Newley music. And I'm sitting next to now somebody extremely important, I consider, because I think a man who can cook is probably about the most marvelous thing ever. So I'd like you to meet John Burton Race. Hello, John. Hello. How come you're here tonight, by the way? Siang asked you or? Sieng asked me, and it's all about the fact that we met in Vietnam. I've right. been I've been up until COVID working there for about two years. For in Vietnam? Th yeah, for three different companies all over Vietnam. And I got to the stage where I was looking after 13 executive chefs for three different groups. Some down in Halong, Hanoi, and in Ho Chi Minh. And we um, sort of learnt about, I learnt about rather, Vietnamese food and they, from me, learnt about what the Western tourists would expect to eat when they weren't eating Vietnamese food. So in other words, we gave people an option. Right. And um, so as much as I taught them, they taught me. Well, I, under, I think we're all going to Vietnam in March, aren't we? I can't Open. wait. I hope it happens because... Yeah, so do um, I. Because I absolutely love the people. I really? love the country. I love um, the, the, the ge uh, geography of the place. And the food. And the food. Do you know what? I was born in Singapore. Okay. And I, as a little boy, lived also in Thailand and in Malaysia. And it wasn't until three or four years ago when I went to Vietnam that I realized that actually their food is probably the best in the Far East. It's perfumed, it's not so fatty, it's not so greasy. And everyone in England knows about Thai food and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But Vietnamese food, for me, is so perfumed, it's so fresh. The ingredients are second to none and I love it. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to going. Why, were you, why did you grow up there? Did your parents have something to do? Yeah, so um, my um, father was the director for the Far East for the UN. And okay. so we moved fr from, when I was younger, we moved from country to country, mainly in the Far East, until I got to the stage where they thought I should get some serious schooling. And then they cleared me off to a public school in England. Marvel. Well, actually, <laughs> which I, I didn't last very long, <laughs> actually. But. Well, I just still think that public schools are quite good. Um, somebody's playing the piano here. We should probably tell them to stop. Can you stop playing piano? Um, sorry, actually, you're doing brilliantly well. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> sorry about the that, ladies and gentlemen. It. We are in the music thing, but we're. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, it was Lenny Beige oh, yeah. um, in his bry nylon suit. Ah. So you, the, you landed up in a public school here, and then what on earth took you into cooking? Well, so basically, I wanted, and I always wanted, to do art. And after O-levels, etc., I wanted to go to art school. And my parents are terribly Victorian, and they mm. said, No, son of mine! <laughs> is going to do a three-year degree and then come out and stack shelves in Sainsbury's. And so, what else do you want to do? And I've always been interested in cooking, um, all over the place. And so, I think I was press-ganged into it initially because they thought, because I was a, probably a lazy child, they thought that first taste of hard work, meeting all these extraordinarily strange people, I'd come back and beg for my books. <laughs> And actually, there were times when I wanted to, but I couldn't let myself give in to them. It was that fight against me against my parents. So, so where did you first start cooking? I mean, so I started in a, 
a very unknown little four-star hotel in Winchester, uh, run in those days by THF, Trust House Forties. Right. And then I started my apprenticeship there, which is going to be three or four years. And then after a year, I got moved up to Big London. So I know that you're two-star Michelin chef, aren't you? That's right. I got my um, first Michelin star when I was 26, and then uh, my two stars came a year later when I was 27. Where? And I'm only which, 32 which, now. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Which, which one where? where? Oh, so I, um, I had a lot of in Berkshire, and um, then I uh, went to the Landmark and got John Burton Race at the Landmark, got two stars there. I had a star in Notting Hill and a star in uh, the New Angel in Dartmouth. And I, I probably had stars most of my life there. Yippee, well, I hope. You're going to be thrilling us all with food because I think we're all being fed by you. Um, well, today, some of us. today is extraordinary, and it's a bit of a removal from what I normally do, uh, because it's all about Vietnamese street food. But right. having said that, these are dishes that I've loved and eaten in Vietnam. So, and as long as I've done them properly, they should be all right. But one of these days, I want you to make me a chocolate souffle. I will. I will. <laughs> Definitely, it's one of my favourite too. I love it with a great big dollop of. Um, pistachio ice cream. Well, I just love souffles. I know it's it's probably heart attack city, but you know. I want to thank you so much though, John, yeah. for talking to me yeah. on, on Globe Trotting, because I know you've got to get back into the kitchen. Absolutely. They're trying to rehearse, and I'm sorry about the kind of interruptions. The doors are apparently about to open and people are about to flood in. And a lot of us will be eating your food. Well, I hope you enjoy it. Yippee, and we'll all be in Vietnam. Let's pray, let's pray. hope. In March, isn't in it? In March, yeah, the 2nd of March. It. Yeah, look forward to it. Thank you, John. Yeah. John Burton Race. From him, we're going to stop now because they want to carry on with rehearsing and the show's about to start very soon. Hello, it's wonderful to be here in this beautiful venue, which is so now, so 2021, remembering the words of music of the great Anthony Newley. Well, it's a fabulous show tonight. Great performers. Jay Shillingford, Dana Gillespie. It's great. Real tribute to Anthony Newley. of talented people that are celebrating the life of one of the most incredibly talented men that ever existed. What a show it is. Really good. A particular favourite will really be the uh, Dana Gillespie. What an incredible night. Um, we're only at the interval, but already I know a lot more about Anthony Newley. And Lenny is the star, as he always is, for every performer has been spectacular. Thank you so much for organising this whole thing. Well, we have very much enjoyed the show. We've had some amazing people in it. Uh, David Palmer. Uh, the Porter Bar Palmer. This is going to be amazing. It's amazing. I want to see more of this kind of thing. And this fabulous place. We've got to come in. It's been announced. Ten years of Anthony Newley nights and this was the best yet. There's always a joker in the pack. There's always a cardboard clown. The poor painted fool falls on his back and everyone laughs when he's down. There's always a funny man in the game but he's only funny by mistake. The same, they don't see his painted heartbreak. Oh, they don't care as long as there is a jester, just a fool, as foolish as he can be. There's always a joker, that's the rule, but fate deals a hand, and I see the joker is me. With a fine young son.
Thank you. And life's a funny lie. But when the curtain's sinking, are you thinking of the day your mother gave your dancing shoes a shine? Pushed you on the stage and whispered, Kit, you'll be all right. The spotlight hurts your eyes, but stir the spark that stirs now in your heart. Look at me, look at me, I'm the funny man. And my home is any microphone that's free. With my nerves of caffeine, I'm the laughter machine. I'm the man who makes you. It's one of our greatest living songwriters. And tonight he will be interpreting newly, instrumentally, with pure imagination. And. I would heartily recommend a guy recently has been channeling Mrs. Mills um, and released a piano only album of your own compositions, uh, which is beautiful. Go gentle into the night. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear friend, the incredible talent of Mr. Guy Chambers. Beautiful. Take it away, Guy. Destiny calls me 
And though it may be that once in my lifetime I'm gonna do great Just a cold finger beckons you to enter his web of sin. But don't go in. Golden words he will pour in. Love it makes the world taste good. Oh, who can take tomorrow? could take tomorrow Sprinkle it with dew Sprinkle it with dew And cover it in chocolate or a miracle or two The Candyman The Candyman can. You know the Candyman can candy man. You know the Candyman can Cause he mixes it with love And makes the world taste good Oh, here we go! The Candyman makes a Satisfying and delicious Why don't you talk about you wishes? You know you could even eat the commissions Oh, who can take a rainbow? Take a rainbow And then wrap it in a sigh Soak it in the sun and make a strawberry lemon pie. The candy man, uh, the candy man, you can. know the candy man can. Uh, candy man can. Yes, the candy man can, cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste. Here we go! Oh, the candy man makes everything he makes satisfying, delicious. Why don't you talk about? the world. 